Hello everybody and welcome to Kerbal Space Program to Infinity and Beyond. My quest to go from junior space cadet to full-fledged NASA engineer in the Indy rocket ship building simulator and flying simulator actually, Kerbal Space Program. So without further ado, let's get started here. I picked up Kerbal Space Program yesterday, but this is an indie game that's been kicking around for a while. It's in a very, very early alpha stage, but if you're interested, you can pick up the most recent build from their website at KerbalSpaceProgram.com. You can also pre-order the game for 15 bucks and get access to uh, the most recent version, which it actually requires that donation or that pre-order. Uh, there's also a free version, which is a little bit older, but I'm using the, the most recent version. So if you're not familiar with Kerbal Space Program, this is basically going to be uh, a little bit of an introductory episode to just explain the basic mechanics, and also we're going to do a little bit of rocket ship flying, but it's, it's going to be like the origin story of Kerbal Space Program. So what we're going to do, uh, we have a launch pad, we have a tracking station, we have a space plane hangar, and we have a vehicle, assembling ability, a vehicle assembly building, which is where I am going to go. So what we're going to do, Kerbal Space Program is all about building your own rocket ship and then trying to basically fly it as far as you can. I believe there is a destination you're trying to get to, but that is well beyond my expertise right now. I've only put about, you know, maybe 45 minutes into an, uh, to an hour into this game, and I'm having a lot of fun so far, and it's fucking hilarious, so I thought you guys might like to see it. So the first thing we're going to do is pick a command module. You can see that each thing that we come across here has its own description, like it's proud to present our second generation cockpit, equipped to ensure survival in some of the worst conditions possible, it has slightly increased weight. We're going to go with the most simplistic kind of command pod that we have here. We have to pick one of these. Let's go with uh, this one. I think... Yeah, why not? It doesn't look that cool, but we'll go with it. I'm too much of a noob in this game already to, uh, you know, worry too much about the specifications like mass and drag and stuff like that, but I'm sure that will come into play later. So we're going to move our command module up here. We can move ourselves around with our look, and now we're basically just going to try to build ourselves a, a bitchin' rocket ship, and I'm going to build a very, very simplistic one here. And let's just treat it as if our goal is to get as far as possible without, like, crashing into the landscape and killing a bunch of people. So after we have our command module, in order to ensure the safety of our astronauts, we should go over here to Utility and Scientific. Maybe we'll toss on a parachute nose cone there so that they can actually land safely rather than at like 400 meters per second when they hit. And then we can basically decide how the hell we want to build this from here on in. So we've got things for propulsion like fuel tanks, jet engines, solid fuel boosters, which are basically going to give us like raw power but not that much control. Uh, or, you know, like jet engines, they give us, I guess, a little bit more control but less raw power uh, but also have substantially less mass. But anyway... Uh, we also have other stuff here, like, let's go structural and aerodynamics. So we have uh, decouplers, which we're actually going to come in handy. Let's toss some decouplers up here. The way a decoupler works is when you want to go from one stage, stage of your launch to another one. Let's say I put, like, let's go back here and take a solid fuel bo booster. And then we'll toss another decoupler right here. And then another solid fuel booster below it. So basically the way this would work is that I would launch my rocket... And then eventually this first solid fuel booster after firing would run out of fuel, so I would want to decouple it using this decoupler, and then the next one would fire, and then we would eventually decouple that when it ran out of fuel. But anyway, that's what decoupler is going to be used for. Basically, they're going to allow us to have multi-stage uh, elements to our rocket ship here. But anyway, so we're going to toss a decoupler up here. And like I said, we're just going to build a very simplistic rocket to kind of show you the basics of Kerbal Space Program, which is basically all I'm qualified to talk about. But I'm hoping that over the course of this series, which is going to consist of mostly short daily videos... Uh, mostly documenting my failures, probably, but uh, that I will grow, and you will grow, and hopefully, you know, we'll all grow together and enjoy this game. Hopefully, if you're more experienced with the game, like, feel free to leave me comments giving me tips, but don't just give me, like, your design for a rocket ship that is going to work effectively. I'd like to discover that on my own. That's part of the fun. So, now we need, uh, we have, like, our command module. I'm going to attach a, where is that? I think that's in command and control. I'm going to atta gonna attach an SAS module. In fact, I'm actually going to put that underneath here. Uh, and that is going to give us a little bit more control over the kind of trajectory of our ship. It's going to keep us relatively constant, as constant as it possibly can as we move forward. So if we start to shift in one dimension or another, it will actually like hold us in place as much as it possibly can. And then let's toss a set of... Where is it here? We'll toss some tri-couplers here to expand our rocket ship a little bit. And then we'll just stack some solid fuel, fuel boosters underneath. So let's put one here. One here, and one here, and then we'll put another, uh, we can't do a tricoupler, we'll put more decouplers underneath, we're almost done here, don't worry. And then you'll get to see the beautiful launch of my first rocket ship. So we'll put this under here, this under here, this under here, and then we'll put more solid fuel boosters. This is, I'm, I'm not going to spoil things for you, but this is not going to succeed nearly as much as we want it to. It might get us a, you know, a few kilometers above the Earth's surface. 
but not much more than that. Okay, so now we have our rocket ship. More or less, it's not that impressive. Let's deck it out with some, some sweet aerodynamics. We'll put a structural wing on it on, on this side. Hopefully avoid imbalancing it, because if you do imbalance it, then, you know, you're going to have a bad time. Actually, we should just get rid... Let's get this out of here. Get this out of here. Out of my face, structural wing. Instead, we'll attach a winglet. And we'll attach one to, like, the top of our command module here. <laughs> this is terrible. Uh, okay, well, let's put one here. Uh, this is going to imbalance the shit out of this. We'll put one here. We'll put one here. Let's try to get it as balanced as possible, please. Uh, there we go. Okay, that seems more or less in line. And then we'll put one here. Again, just trying to get it to line up properly. So I don't send my ship into a tailspin. You know, that looks fairly centered, I guess. I don't have the best eye for stuff like this. But anyway, we, now we can save our ship. Or maybe we can't. Maybe we could change our name up here. So we'll call this Northern Lions Rockets Mark 1. And we'll see... Mark 1. Actually, you know what? Let's just let's rename it. Let's call it the Northern Lion Mark 1. And we'll save it under this name. So we can look back on these ships throughout the series and see how much we've progressed. But for now, let's just go to the launch pad and I'll show you how this works. So I already had a ship on the launch pad. We'll just clear that and get ready to proceed. All right, so here we are. I'm going to skip the tutorial right now. And this is my, my rocket ship on the launch pad. And basically, we're just going to get started here. Uh, as we get going, I'm basically just going to be using my space bar to go between stages. So the first stage is going to be just lift off, and then we'll decouple these bottom boosters down here. Uh, and then eventually, with the, when those run out of fuel, we'll decouple these ones, and then we'll just float through the air and hopefully just land safely with all three of our astronauts, Gillen Kerman, Maitri Kerman, and Roderick Kerman, hopefully still alive. We'll keep an eye on them throughout the flight to see how this goes. So to steer, I'm going to be using W, A, S, D, Q, and E to control my roll, pitch, and yaw. You know, without further ado, I say we just get started here. So, five, four, three, two, one, liftoff. Okay, so you can see our velocity going there. I am going to turn on my SAS module just to make sure that I have relatively constant thrust here. Kerbals seem to be doing all right. My rocket ship seems to be doing okay, but as you can see in the bottom left here, my fuel is going to run out sooner rather than later, which is unfortunate. Uh, but this is basically just to give you an idea of how the heck we are going to play Kerbal Space Program from here on out. We also are running the risk of overheating, but these are going to run out of fuel way too quickly for overheating to be a risk. So just by tapping the space bar a few times, I entered our next stage of the rocket. And we're getting some pretty good speed here, you know? We're probably going to end up at around maybe 300 to 400 meters per second at the time we start plummeting back to Earth. But for now, this has been a fairly successful uh, launch, I would say. We're like six kilometers up in the air. Definitely more successful than the first time I tried to do it, uh, you know, without having any kind of tutorial myself. So we're out of fuel on these now. We'll just decouple those. And now we're just kind of flying here in, in our rocket ship, or in our command module. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily... Oh, God! <laughs> oh, that can't be good for business. Let's go back and look up. Come on, where is it? Where'd it go? Is that it? No, it's the moon. All right, I'm not sure what's going to happen to my other module there, but for now, we're just going to plummet back to Earth with our command module. I think we're slowly... We're actually still going up. That's how much thrust we had, but then we will plummet back to Earth here in a second or two. I'm going to try to pilot us towards the water, if at all possible. All right, now we are starting to descend fairly rapidly. It might take us a minute or two to get down here, but this is the basics of Kerbal Space Program. My only goal for this first video was to show you the basics of building a rocket, and also the um, you know the basic interface of the game and the basic mechanics of the game. And I think that has been accomplished here. So if, if my goal, if if my goal was to have all of my Kerbals survive here, then I would say I have achieved my goal, and I've done better than I than I have in my past life as well, or my past attempts. It looks like that's my like remaining rocket parts over there. Debris is just falling towards the Earth. Let me guess, that is going to land safely in the water. Oh, so am I actually. Oh god, that... Thank god we didn't launch this in like Cape Canaveral or something. That could have destroyed a family. Alright, well there it goes down to the earth. We'll recover that debris later. James Cameron will make a movie about it. It'll be awesome. We should be able to see it plunge in. Uh, well actually that is still a fairly good distance, I think. From the water. As are we, actually. Although we are, you know, speeding up. If we didn't have a parachute, we would basically just be plummeting towards the earth right now. So even though we don't have any jets, I can still control like... 
my movement to a certain extent here, but obviously the parachute is holding me up. So provided we land safely, I will consider this introduction or introductory episode to be a modest success. Kerbals lived. Oh god, don't land on the shore. Where's the wind? What's the wind direction? You can do it! Oh man, that is gonna be shallow water. We will see. But yeah, I consider this introductory episode a success. Uh, this has been Kerbal Space Program, so expect these episodes to come more or less daily and be pretty short, just like my next design or my newest design and, uh... Oh, come on. There we go. Yeah, like my newest design and, and how it pans out. And believe me, a lot of these are gonna end in explosions. In fact, maybe we'll just do another run to show you what can happen uh, when things go terribly, terribly wrong in Kerbal Space Program. But anyway, we're gonna touch down here. Descending very, very slowly. But once we touch the water and I see that all my Kerbals are alive, I will end this flight. We're gonna touch down right now. Okay, perfect. Kerbals are a little bit pissed off, but otherwise okay. So we can end our flight. And we can take a look at the flight events that happened. We had liftoff, separation, the stack decouplers, a little bit of damage. Um, but otherwise, everyone lived. We got up to 508 meters per second, got up to 16 kilometers up. I'm honestly not sure uh, at which point we exit the atmosphere, but hey, that was a good start. Let's restart the flight very quickly and I'll show you what can go terribly wrong if you like don't activate the SAS module which is what, remember, what keeps you in constant force, or if you just want to be a dick. So let's lift off here and then just like hold down the W key or the S key and things will very quickly start to go horribly wrong. Oh God, it's looking like that viral video of that terrible Chinese rocket that killed all those people. Now I feel like an asshole. Okay, so here we go, We're starting to go down. Let's decouple. Oh shit, things going terribly. Decouple! Oh God. And here we go, crashing into... <laughs> I may actually still live out of this, but nope, killed in action. Suffice to say that was more of a standard Kerbal Space Program result than, than the one that we saw last time. But anyway, we'll head back to our Space Center here. As always, thank you guys for watching the first episode of To Infinity and Beyond. As always, I appreciate your support on these new series. But in any case, as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.